the swirl in your heart, you can feel the the promise of where this is all heading. You can feel the healing happening. It, amazing, isn't it amazing in a five day retreat that you can allow yourself that much opening in just five days. And then what we can do too is we can share a little bit too of our lives and our collaborations um, and um, how it's just been these nudges, these promptings from spirit that we've followed the nudges, followed the little promptings. And it's not like, I think in the world, the world's always looking for like big splashes in form, like big changes, but the change of shifting your attitude and opening your heart up is something that needs to be nurtured along, and it doesn't always come with these huge changes in form. It's, it's um, these inner shifts, and there's a lot of miracles that come that have to really fill your heart up before you start to really have that turn. I know when there's a huge amount of fear and intensity in your life, you know, then it's a natural calling to like say, help me, how do I turn this around? Uh, we grow up in a society where there's, there's drugs or there's pills or there's something you can do for a quick relief, but um, when you're turning your life from a, a upside down perspective to a right side up perspective, uh, Francis and I were talking this morning, it's like you know, these giant uh, aircraft carriers out to sea, the giant boats that the planes land on, it would be, how quick can you turn an aircraft carrier around? <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes that's, that's what you're, when you're asking for a big turnaround, when, some, when you have an intensity, it's like turning an aircraft carrier around. Uh, you, you need some spaciousness, obviously, uh, and you, you will probably need some time to turn the thing around. It's not going to flink like this. You know, and um, a lot of times when I meet people who who get diagnosed with a terminal illness or cancer or something, you know, the prayer is, I, please, let I want to let go of the cancer, I want to let go of the disease, but let me keep my life exactly as it is, just without the disease, you know. And it's like, well, actually, this is just a symptom of, of the calling of your heart to turn the aircraft carrier around. and. And it's, it's a glorious thing, and even when I see many people I've met uh, on my travels and during this uh, 25 years of even people who are diagnosed with a terminal illness, and it starts, it starts them questioning what, the, what their values are, what the purpose of the whole thing is about. Where they can go for 10, 20, 30, 40 years without even wondering what's it all about, and then one diagnosis, like a terminal illness, then they start allowing themselves permission to ask those questions. Like, what is the whole purpose of my life? Yesterday, uh, I was going to be going to town, and um, uh, one of the three girls that you talk about that run around and make noise uh, was saying, where have you been, David? And so I was sharing and so forth, and, and I said, I'm, I'm going to town, and I was trailing off, and she says, chocolate? I want some chocolate. And I turned back and I said, I'll see what I could do about that. So so then I hear later on that, that she was part of your, your session in the afternoon here and Zulu dances and everything. The three of them, you know, doing this and this and this. So we're off in town and um, and uh, we were working on the internet and doing different things and uh, Francis was sitting at the terminal next to me. She said, I think I'm going to go to the is it pick and pay and get some uh, milk and everything? I said, I said, oh, okay. And uh, so I continued working, and she comes back, and uh, she's got the milk, and she's she's bought chocolate. I haven't mentioned anything. She said, oh, and I got this chocolate. She said, I took a bite of it. I, have, I don't like. I don't even know why I bought this chocolate. I said, oh, I do. <laughs> and my central casting is working here. Uh, she said, I don't even know why I bought this chocolate. So she's got this chocolate. It's like a thing that's got little bars of chocolate in it. She's to take a bite out of one of them. So then we're coming, we come back, and we're coming there, and we, we pass the car where the three girls are in the back of the truck with Jeremy. And Jeremy's in the front, and they're all in the back, giggling and laughing and everything. And our windows are down, and everything, and I'm like, oh! Oh, by the way, the chocolate is for them. So 
the chocolate gets passed through the window and they're all happy on the ride with Jeremy getting the chocolate. It's central casting. We don't even, Francis didn't even know anything about the chocolate. I didn't even mention the chocolate. And it all gets handled, even little whims like, oh, chocolate, don't forget the chocolate thing when you go to town. So it, it's, it shows you can start to relax. And Chris handling things, coming here to grow the food that he's serving us. He came here to grow the food and to help pick the food and serve the food, cook the food, serve the food. You know, it's so beautiful when you see how well we're taken care of. And we've come here to heal. We've come here to heal and bless, and everything that we've needed has been provided for us. And always will be. That's the other part. The Course says, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will give you what you need, and will renew it, Jesus says, as long as you have need of it. But the Holy Spirit will not have you linger in time. The Holy Spirit will give you what you need, will renew it as long as you have need of it, but won't have you linger in time. In other words, won't have the ego start to misuse, misuse what's being given, so that you'll stay stuck in time. It's just given to you in a temporary nature, so that you can heal, forgive, and let go of time. Not to stay stuck in time. So it's good to remember that, that the Spirit really knows knows what you need. He knows what you need, and so He also knows He won't allow you to misuse what's given in the plan. So really we're safe. We can't even, we can't mess it up. <laughs> the ego can't hijack, hijack the plan. Yeah, it's really beautiful. And for me it's been wonderful uh, experiencing the Course in Miracles too, because I got to have lunch with Judy Scutch. She was one of the original four with the Course. She was the publisher of the Course. And so I would, she was so happy to have lunch with me, and her husband is in charge of all the translations all over the world, 16, 17 languages, William Whitson. And, and she just loved telling me all the stories of their life. And again, it was the same thing that we're talking about here. It was just orchestrated. You know, initially, after Helen Shuckman spent um, like seven years taking down the course in shorthand in these black binder books, um, eventually they kind of kept them locked and hidden. These were research psychologists that are receiving this dictation from Jesus. And through this like inner voice, which they research psychologists. Psychologists generally lock people up <laughs> to hear voices. And they felt a little odd that they were the ones doing this. So, so they kept the books under lock and key. Like, but they didn't tell their staff or they didn't tell friends. They just kind of in the closet. There were cloths. There were Course in Miracles closet, scribe, and, and assistant. And eventually when the four of them came together, kind of wondering when it was all done, what to do, they were all together. It seemed like that the only thing they could do was just pray. What do we do with all these black binder books? Because they didn't know what to do with it. And um, so Ken waited, and Helen waited, and Bill waited, didn't hear anything. It was Judy was the one who heard from Jesus, make the commitment first. Like they're all praying, what, what are their next steps? And what comes from Jesus is make the commitment first. Dedicate your lives to this. Give, give your lives over to this before I tell you what the instructions are, what to do with my book. Very interesting. Make the commitment first. Isn't that interesting? Before the instructions comes a request for the commitment. Before the form, before the, even the form of what we would call a Course in Miracles was even given, like a book, or like in England, of course, there's a green book, and and first came uh, three books. Of, you know, the text, the workbook, and the manual was published as three separate hardbound books in the United States in the very first printing, um, make the commitment first. So, and then as soon as they they made the commitment, it was, Judy told me it was probably just a 
a few days later that she got a call from, I think it was uh, this man in Mexico, um, who was saying, I, I've heard that there's photocopies going around of this Course in Miracles, and I really, I really want a copy of this. I, I really think this should be a book. And she says, well, yeah, we've just prayed on that uh, recently and everything. And he said, good, because I've just been interdirected to sell a property that I have to give you the money from that property for the first printing of A Course in Miracles. It's, sometimes I call it like JC, for J Jesus Christ, JC Central is in charge of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. JC Central is in charge of got us all to Moorfield. Uh, JC Central is behind the course, behind these properties and people coming together. There's a presence that's orchestrating everything. It's behind everything we're doing. And human beings think they're doing something and making decisions and and making important decisions and so forth. And it's not really the case. There's there's a presence behind this and and that's the way that it unfolded. In fact, um, I, don't, I think he was right, it was like transgender or transsexual. I can imagine Christians going, right, Jesus had a, a transgender person <laughs> fund his book. <laughs> he had a, oh yeah, that's right, he had a Jewish atheist uh, scribe it down, and a research psychologist comfort her arm when she was really nervous. I'm hearing voices, I'm hearing voices. And then we have a transgender, uh, transsexual funding. It. You can just imagine how well that goes over. But that's the fun of all this. Central casting doesn't see race, doesn't see sexuality, doesn't see all these stereotypical judgmental things that, that are there. It just sees a, a beautiful plan of unfoldment. Um, another thing, you know, it, like on earth, you know, there's this thing with marriage and the sacredness of marriage and everything. And, uh, you know, like, Jesus would never have you get divorced. I mean, how many times have I heard that? Jesus is never going to guide you to get divorced. Well, I'll tell you what he did with Judy Scutch and her husband, <laughs> Bob Scutch. Because uh, they were both, Judy was there telling the story, and she said, Wait, let me tell the story to David. Um, she was in her 70s. Um, she's, she's married to Bob. Bob's working with the Course, she's working with the Course, and she's kind of starting to popularize the Course a little bit. She actually did an interview for New Realities magazine, a very popular New Age magazine, talking about the Course. This is way back in the, in the 70s, I think. And basically, um, she's done some talks. She's starting to travel a bit, speak on the course, and this and that. And uh, she's just come back from Washington, D.C. And she's there. And um, she's relaxing a bit from all the travels and everything. And uh, a man from Washington, D.C., uh, who was a, a, a speechwriter for the President of the United States, <laughs> Uh, who was studying A Course in Miracles, the speechwriter for the President of the United States, calls her up and basically says, uh, you've got to come back to Washington, D.C. And she's like, uh, no, I've just been there. I'm not, I'm not going back to Washington, D.C. I'm resting with my husband. And he's, you've got to come back to Washington, D.C. Uh, to meet a a former retired Pentagon general. Now we've got transsexuals, atheists, <laughs> and now we've got a speechwriter from the President of the United States who studies the course, and a Pentagon, a retired Pentagon general, or former Pentagon general. She said, now I know I'm not coming. <laughs> I have no interest in meeting a Pentagon general at all. Thank you very much. And uh, her friend says, uh, Oh, he studies the Course in Miracles. Now the, the ex Pentagon general studying the Course in Miracles as well. So she's like, okay. So she goes over to meet this guy, and uh, she's telling the story. He's he's now married to her. <laughs> telling the story years later, but uh, she's got a husband. She goes there. She meets this guy, and uh, at first. Uh, she kind of sees him, he's a tall man, and she goes to this, uh, um, half this apartment, she goes to see him, and she kind of walks over to him, she's kind of short, she sees this tall man, and kind of distinguished, 
with kind of grayish hair and everything there, and she's waiting to see him. And, and she tells the story, I think, when he turns around, he, she had, sticks her hand out to shake his hand, and he said something to her like, Damn it, woman, where you been? I've been looking for you my whole life. And I was like, instead of hello or hi. <laughs> And, you know, these are the Jesus kind of stories, you know, everything is, is part of a prearranged plan and, and the humans don't know what's going on, but it's striking. These are like, that's not the kind of thing you would expect, not hello, hi. So they actually go do some seminars together and everything. She's married, you know, she's, she's been sent across the country, like when Harry met Sally, she's flown all the way across, or, or what's the one with... Uh, Big Ryan, Sleepless in Seattle, where the, the plane keeps going. She's flown across, so she's there, and basically, after a while, they spend a few days together doing some things together. They're they're in the same in this home, same hotel, different rooms, and then they're sitting on this couch together, and uh, she's really wondering like, what's going on here, and this and this, and so she she turns to him and she said, I think we should medit meditate meditate together. I think we should pray. We should pray and we should ask the Holy Spirit what the purpose of this uh, coming together is all about. And uh, she says, yeah, I think we really should. So, so they, they take a few moments to pray and meditate and then you know, she opens her eyes and she's like, what did you hear? <laughs> he said, what did you, what did you hear? <laughs> well, the purpose of our relationship is everything. She said, everything? What's everything? He said, friend and lover, confidant, collaborator. He rattles off like ten different things that are part of this. And she's like, just all tied up and like, oh, that does sound like everything, but I don't know what's going on here. So finally she, she flies back and she comes back to her husband and basically she said, uh, well, he's like, how was it? He's so excited. <laughs> Tell me about the meeting with, with, with Bill, this is the former Pentagon general. He's so excited. She's not really interested in talking about any of it. She's like thinking, it's best we just drop the subject. You know? <laughs> but she's flown all the way over there and he studies the course and he knows that she was why she went over there and everything. So he said, come on, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me more, tell me, is he coming, is he coming to visit us? And she's like, trying to like, <laughs> said, I don't want this to go too far. She's not wanting her marriage to be broken up. She's just, you know, on. so he's like so excited. So uh, finally it gets to the point where they do invite him to come to their house. So now he is, flies across, like sleepless in Seattle, the plane flies across, he comes across, he's in the house with him, and she said, my husband and William just hit it off like long lost brothers that had not seen each other for years. They just love each other, They're just talking, talking. She hardly gets to see them. They're just talking so much, they hit it off so well. So this retired Pentagon general, and her former Pentagon general and her husband. And so finally she's just watching this whole thing unfold, and told me she, I think she was doing the dishes one day, they were kind of out on the patio outside. She could kind of hear through the screens what they were talking about. And she was just kind of doing the dishes, listening, and these two men are talking about sports. Sports, and sports teams, and sports scores. And they're going back and forth, back and forth about the sports, and she's listening, listening. And then finally, um, her husband, Bob, turned in the middle of the sports talk, just in the middle of the sports talk, turns and says, William, what are your intentions for Judy in the middle of the sports book? And she's like, Doing the dishes. And, she's like and, and uh, William says, my intentions are to marry her. <laughs> and she's just like, doing the dishes. <laughs> and then they, she said, they went right back to talk to sports. <laughs> Just, just slipped it in there, you know, just kind of like, how men do you know, and everything, and what are your intentions, and my intentions to marry her, and now back to the, the sports, you know, and so, so finally when 
she's telling the story. He's right there for all he's telling, while she's telling me the whole story. He, you know, William leaves. He flies back to Washington to see him. So she goes to her husband. She goes, what is going on? I heard that conversation. You got it. What is going on? Come on, be straight with me. And her husband just very calmly says, uh, I told you about this before. And she said, told me about what? You've never mentioned any of this. He said, no, no. He said, you, I, you should know that this is, this is happening. Because we, I've talked to you about this before. She says, what are you talking about? What? You have not mentioned anything about this. What is going on here? What is happening? And he, like a lot of people who journal, when they work with the Course and Jesus, they start asking Jesus questions and, you know, taking, scribing answers and hearing, journaling answers from Jesus. Well, he, when he started studying the material, you know, he started journaling in, in look, black, like black books or books just like Helen had. And he had taken down notes from the Spirit and everything, and he, lots of them. He had many, many of these things, and he said, I showed you one of these books before, and it mentioned uh, William. The Spirit mentioned William, and you knew this was... She says, what are you talking about? So he goes and he gets the book, and what he had taken down his notes on. And he said, I showed you this before. And in it, it said, when William comes along, he is the one. This, the Spirit said to Bob, her husband, when William comes along, he is the one. Let Judy go with William. It was, yeah. it was journal. He'd already described it, journal it, and she was like saying, you're stupid books, and you're stupid journaling and everything. He said, no, no, it's right here. It's all, it was, it was all given. And what we learn from the Course more and more is this is all, seems to be playing out in linear time, but this is all part of a prearranged plan. You know, Jesus even says the script is written. This is all part of a prearranged plan. He says, you, we're, you're really together with me at the end of time, and you're, we're just looking back at what has already gone by, and you're just imagining that you're making the journey again. This is all over and done, but you're just imagining that you're still making the journey. You believe there's still choices open. You still believe you have a life of your own and you can do whatever you want with it. You, you believe you have a band of time between birth and death that you can spend, like currency, any way that you want to, which choices are open every day. And it's all part of a prearranged plan. But it's fun when you hear our stories, when you hear Judy's stories, when you sit down and you hear Ken's stories, when you hear if you, what was the book, Remember to Laugh with Bill Thetford? You can, beautiful book. You start to get this quality that everything is being orchestrated by central casting. I call it JC Central. JC Central is behind everything, and there are no accidents on who's to meet, and there's no accidents on the plans to a full. It's not like uh, you come together, you have an experience, and you go, okay, let's see if we can band together and get a group of people to have a center, or uh, of Terry coming here, and the talks and discussions and about having a cafe, and and the different things that could happen, and, and the different partners that would be involved, and so on and so forth. When the ego is at it, it can gyrate all kinds of plans, blueprints, you know, potentialities, hypotheticals. The ego is good at generating hypotheticals. This whole world is a hypothetical, as if the separation happened. The entire cosmos is nothing more than a little hypothetical. Uh, Joel Goldsmith called it a parenthesis in eternity. <laughs> That's all this is, is just a generated hypothetical. And really, you have to realize that you have to let, give up the hypothetical thinking and get into guidance. Because how else are you going to tune in to JC Central? How else are you going to tune in to the one that's behind the actual plan of awakening? Not the hypothetical plan. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, I hope, I wish, I hope, I wish, I hope, I wish, I hope. No, this is not a wish, I hope plan. This is a plan that has actual contacts, people you're supposed to meet, things you're supposed to do together, assignments you're supposed to do together. It's all part of a prearranged plan. That's why you got to really tune in with what you feel inside. Because you want to tap in to that prearranged plan. You want to tap in to what your calling is. 
it's not this is not hope and wish there's there's no risk involved in God's plan there's no you know I wish I could make this happen I wish that could happen it's not wishing there's no scheming involved when you hear these stories what we're talking about we're quite clueless of people that we meet properties that come in it's like it's just dropping dropping gently in and we're just beholding what's happening and going along with it and so it may seem scary to the ego because the ego thinks that it's providing for itself the ego believes you're an autonomous human being with this will of your own and you can make your decisions and you have a choice of, in things and actually it's all part of a pre-designed plan of, of seeing that you don't really have a choice to make in terms of the form of things you do have a choice in terms of purpose that's what we've been emphasizing all week is, is purpose is the only choice is, is open your heart up to be happy open your heart up to the joy to the true freedom to the innocence open your heart up to be guided and then it will be given you from that but don't think that you personally have to figure out what you're going to do and that's kind of funny you know uh, Helen Schuckman was an atheist and really a and very much into academia and she was used as part of this bigger plan and this David character seemed to be raised as a Christian but my the bachelor's degree that this character holds is one in urban planning ha 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 <laughs> you know planning to think that we can plan anything when central casting is behind everything it's just it, it turns into like a lot of fun because you start to realize you're not really in charge of it so that's part of what we wanted to impart today as you are here going through these healings and emotions you're starting to feel inspirations and in saying how how do I practically apply this you can't really bring the course into your little life uh, it's too big it's not going to fit into your little life but if you can bring your little life to central casting and central casting will go very good uh, now you're ready to be used that's very good Helen Schuckman had a vision she had a lot of visions before the Course in Miracles came and um, one of her visions was she she saw herself and she was in kind of this cape uh, this black thing with a cape and and she was guided into this um, cave somewhere over in the Middle East and she walks into the cave and she goes and she looks down and it's gold tip scrolls you know the scrolls with gold tip and the scrolls are rolled together and um, she goes and she kind of unwraps them and she she starts to uh, unroll the scrolls the gold tip scrolls and as she unrolls them there's two words that appear that are you can see when you unroll the scrolls and the two words are God is and so she starts to unroll the scrolls a little bit more and the voice in her mind says the little tiny words start to appear to the left as she unrolls the scrolls the little tiny words to the right and the voice says if you read the words on the left you can read the past and if you read the words the tiny words on the right you can read the future and she said uh, mm, thank you very much but no I'm content she rolls the scroll back up to just the two words that are appearing she's not interested in the past and the future and it's only God is and the voice says good you made it this time <laughs> <laughs> and that preceded her starting to this inner dictation this is a course in miracles please take note this is a course in miracles please take note central casting is behind all of this it's good to remember that when you get concerned about where will I live what will I do who will I be with what how's the future going to unfold it's good to remember that really you're not in charge of that you just have to have the willingness 
you have to do the prayer and the meditation, you have to do the Course in Miracles applications, living the Course, practicing the Course, and Central Casting will take care of everything else. And we've been talking about that this week. Once you have accepted His plan as the one function you will fulfill, there will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you. Without your effort, He will go before you, making straight your path and leaving in your way no stones to trip on and no obstacles to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you. Not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. You need take thought for nothing except the only purpose you would fulfill. You put the purpose out in front, you can enjoy the cruise control, <laughs> enjoy the ride. And isn't that different than the life of struggle? Struggle, grow old, get sick, die. It's a formula. Struggle, grow old, get sick and die. That's your option. <laughs> you can listen, tune in to Central Casting or Plan B. Struggle. <laughs> that's right, Michelle, like that's not that's a crappy plan. And so, we're being convinced by the Holy Spirit that it's wonderful to tune into that guidance, it's wonderful to listen, it's wonderful to receive, to be a part of it. We're all a part of it, it's, isn't it? It's, it's magical when you hear the stories, when you hear the parables. The only purpose of the parables is that there is one who is in charge. And we would do well to listen to the one who's in charge of the plan. It's only a struggle coming when we try to do it ourselves. And we're right in the middle of that right now. That's why we've been all been brought together, is to remember who's in charge. To step back and let him lead the way. You know, to, to be humble in that, to feel the joy of that. I can feel I can feel all of your love and gratitude with the expression sessions as as the week went on. Just the opportunity to come together in presence and lift up to allow things to come through that were stuck or that were pushed down. You know that's a great gift. Uh, I could feel as we came today to the end of the expression sessions, just the the gratitude welling up. You know, the thank you. We, we don't know our own best interest. Um, we need central casting to bring us together in helpful ways because we individually we don't know our own best interest. And yet there is one here that does know our own best interest, is showering us with blessings. Almost just like a wise, a wise parent saying, oh, try this, this will help. This will help you. And then and how important uh, everyone wants an experience of love. And Jesus says in the Course, love cannot be far behind a grateful heart and a thankful mind. Hmm. The Spirit knows the way to that love. The Spirit knows how to crack open the ego, how to, to crack open those tightly wound intense emotions that are down there where it seems so perplexing, like, how, <coughs> how, and then we're given, you know, this wisdom. A lot of insights has been shared this week, and, and, and also examples and inspirations of like, that lets you know in your heart, okay, it's happening. I don't have to be concerned if I'm going to heal or not. It, it is happening. It's such a, it's so full, so present with us right now. And, and we had, she was channeling it. Her thing was um, she would uh, go into the shower, we had a wood shower at the Peace House, and she would go and turn on the hot water and just spend all this time in the shower under the hot water, just tuning into spirit and everything, and uh, singing in the shower, and then come out and, and uh, pretty much just channel uh, our website into Spanish 
And I've had different um, so-called translators show up too that are just uh, channeling. Instead of me speaking in English and then the Spanish translation coming, they will simultaneously translate. It's like two channels, the English channel coming through <laughs> me and the Spanish channel. So we speak simultaneously instead of back and forth. Channel the message, like a Pentecost, you know, all the tongues coming back in the days of Pentecost and everything. So it's really helpful too to, to see how huge it is that we're not trying to bring the Course into our lives. That, that um, we have all these collaborations coming. There's a man named Bill who, who is very touched by the psychotherapy pamphlet of the Course in Miracles and wants me to work more with um, reaching psychotherapy, the field of psychotherapy. Some of us have been touched by Carl Rogers and, and many great psychologists that were so in tune with spirit. Um, the psychotherapy path that Jesus dictated is amazing and yet, you know, have it start to trickle down into uh, modern day psychotherapy instead of uh, cl cl plodding along um, with let the master uh, inspire the psychotherapy so we can reach the psychotherapist of the world. Um, we we oftentimes we were guided to use the church symbol, so that symbol is being used well with letting this presence come through, trickle down through Christianity. Um, we have a lot of friends that are into non-duality, um, some very vibrant friends. We have a friend Lisa in the UK who's a non-dual teacher, or some may say just it's just presence coming, but we have. There's all these different ways in which the spirit is using the symbols to let it trickle through in a way, through music, obviously the music's coming through, collaborations with movies, uh, screen screenwriters, uh, we also have uh, somebody in um, down in Brazil who is a financier of movies, and all kinds of, uh, yeah, different things coming, that are coming right around the bend where it's just the spirit using the symbols in very inspired ways, and we're like little children, like like beholding the gift. Like, oh, did you see the latest thing to come through? And, oh my gosh! This people were trying to figure out whether I I had ever been married or not. Some people have said, "Is David?" David I mean, no, I don't have it on right now, but I have the symbols sometimes, and whether I've been married or not, and you know, so. They're trying to figure all these things out on the timeline, and, and it's like, I am union. I am union. That's the answer, in case anybody wants to know. Uh, people talk to me about a lot of different Course in Miracles teachers. What do you think about this teacher and that teacher? And I did a YouTube years ago where I said, they're, they're all working for me. They're all working for me. I'm not one among them. They're, they're all me. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you can hear it, it's it takes it off the timeline. It's just central casting is doing all of this, and it's coming through with such presence, and it's it can't be figured out from the personality perspective. It can't, you can't figure it out from the timeline perspective, but you can feel the glory of it, you know, and that's what all of this is being shared for. <laughs> years, years ago, I got a um, an email from. A woman who said, I am the only Course in Miracles student in Belgium. <laughs> and, uh, and then the next day, I got an email from a man who said, I am the only Course in Miracles student in Belgium. And you know it gets your attention when you get that kind of email on consecutive days. So I emailed them both and said, listen, I think you two should have a cup of coffee if you think you're the only two Course in Miracles students in Belgium. So they did, and they got a third, and so then the three of them met, and then they emailed me back, and they go, they said, uh, well, we've decided to invite you to Belgium, and we only have one question, and the question is, can we keep you to ourselves, or do we have to share it? That was the way the question came back. Keep it to, and I said, I wrote back, share. <laughs> so then they started going around, and they started traveling around Belgium, 
and meeting other Course in Miracles students <laughs> and finding that they were not the only <laughs> Course in Miracles student in Belgium. And so then they said, okay, and then they found an American woman living over there who had a Belgian, Belgian uh, husband who had a farm. And so by the time I got over there to visit the two students, people came from seven countries wow. to this farm in rural Belgium. And it all started with two emails. Mm -hmm. I am the only Course in Miracles student in Belgium. So these, it's so beautiful what we're seeing here, it's just the ripples and ripples and ripples. It's just a good step stories of how it's central casting, really having fun with the whole thing. But we, but our part is essential. We, we have to, you know, like what Jonah's saying, I may regret this, but <laughs> yes, okay, yes. <laughs> you know, that, that yes is a big yes. And, and every little yes that we make, you know, opens it up for us to take in the big, the big picture, drink in the big picture. So thank you all for, for your yes, for playing your part perfectly. Gosh, you know, it's just this generosity, generosity, just so much love. And, and it's what's so beautiful, a lot of times when you go to a meeting, you meet people who are into the course, but, you know, I, now I know your mother. You know, I know, know her and, and the story of her devotion to the course and she talking to me in Durban and saying, you know, I have seven children and, oh, Ian and you and Seven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, family secrets One pop down the blue, so <laughs> <laughs> but it's all this, you know, and too, and we got to, we got to meet Paul, we got to meet, you know, your son down there, and, you know, we're getting to meet, and I got to meet your uh, daughter in the, in the hospital. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's true that we come to do these gatherings, but because all of our lives are entwined and connected, we get to meet people, and, and it just radiates out. It's not just A Course in Miracles gathering, it just kind of spills and radiates really to the whole universe and that's what why we record these. Because people, you know, this is your, people are getting to hear the heart of South Africa, you know, really, your hearts are speaking and that's what people want the most, they want to feel that connection, you know. Maybe they've never ha come here themselves but they get to hear the, the generosity you know, and the love of pouring, and that's that's really that's priceless. It's absolutely priceless. And David's authentic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's authentic. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we're giving our lives, but we don't give it. We love in our lives, and we don't love. This is authentic. This is authentic. Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 The Holy Spirit also had a very, very strong part in arranging the sleeping. We slept together because what happened in the room that I shared in was the three snorers. <laughs> <laughs> snores. <laughs> so you got to a point now where when we go to sleep at night, you all say, right, all onto your sides. <laughs> Collaboration. <laughs> no sleeping on your beds.
Thank you, Hanley. Because Hanley and I have emailed probably back and forth over 10 years, and and she so much wanted to be a part of all this, but for some reason wasn't on the team or was told, you know, her part was not required or whatever. And, <laughs> and here you sit and miss all this love where everything, everyone's totally in, enmeshed and enjoined in this great love and you can see how it's, it's central casting is doing it and and that was your part was to just come and really feel feel all that love and behold it and even with you have to leave early tomorrow morning you know here this session just spills out and <laughs> just exactly what what's perfect but you know I've seen how upset I was initially and then as the time progressed, I saw what the huge gift the organizers were giving us. You know, all we had to do was show up. They did all this work for us. You know, and then I really realized I would never have had the time at the time to do it. And that everything is orchestrated. That if, you know, every little thing, there's just no denial. Thank you, all the organizers. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you.